Drippin' So Pretty is probably my favourite artist at the moment. I literally find myself looping so many of his projects over and over. I mean, I've always liked this type of music. Around the time I was like 14, 15, I started getting into underground rap quite heavily. And one of the first scenes I kind of got into was the emo rap scene. Every day I'd come back from school, I'd walk back listening to people like Lil Peep. I even luckily got to see him live in Manchester. But after he passed in late 2017, I kind of saw that as an end of an era. And I never really thought I'd find another artist who could capture the same feelings his music gave me. I mean, there were still artists pushing that sound, but the scene became oversaturated. And I don't know if it's just me, but I thought a lot of the guys who tried to fit in that lane just seemed forced and inauthentic. But Drip on the other hand just felt authentic to me. I literally can't name a single song I don't like by him. He's explored tons of different sounds, has a crazy work ethic, and has lyrics where he openly speaks on his struggles with addiction, without glorifying drugs, with Drip always reflecting the negative impact they've had on him and those around him, pushing for others to aim for sobriety, and I really respect him for this, and just overall how he manages to delve deep into himself and talk about some of the most vulnerable experiences he's had, and it's clear he uses his music as an outlet to pull him out of his own darkness, so it's no surprise his music means a lot to so many people. For me personally, it's helped me get through some tough stuff I've had going on in my personal life so his music means a lot to me it's kind of just a reassurance that you're not alone in what you're going through anyways in this video i thought i'd do my best to cover drip's story talking about topics like his early life his musical inspirations his journey to sobriety and more davis timothy wilson was born and raised in the southern californian beach town of encinitas in san diego and is quarter japanese and white are you Japanese? Japanese, yeah. Quarter Japanese and white. I never said that before. Like, <laughs> Dude, the world like, doesn't really know that shit. It's like the number one question. Yeah, I like, everyone I thinks I'm Hispanic. I'm even allowed to ask this. Around the time he was in middle school, he was really into skating and would also surf as a kid. Drip really enjoyed music too, with Drip even getting into band at school because he wanted to duck having to run laps in the morning for PE. I didn't want to be in PE, so I was in band because I played the drums a little bit. Huh. And uh, so I was in band at Duck PE because you have to do like the mile in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that shit, so. Drip also linked up with a guy called Paul around this time, who was a year older than him. He went to Drip's elementary school, but Drip didn't really know him like that at the time. But he ended up going to his house often to make music with him, with Paul playing guitar and Drip playing the drums. And they mixed death metal and black metal type songs, and Paul taught him how to use the drums. Around the time he was in 7th, 8th and 9th grade, he would play in high school with Paul in Battle of the Bands, and other types of music events. Drip growing up would be exposed to a lot of different types of music. His mum would be listening to Queen, and his dad would play funk music, and Drip would find himself introduced to metal, rock, and rap all through watching MTV. Some of the artists he'd be listening to growing up are Lil Wayne, Ludacris, Lil B, Lex Luger, Wiz Khalifa, Waka, and Gucci Mane. However, in the ninth grade, things started to get tough for Drip. He started to hang out with the older kids who'd be doing Xanax and other drugs like ecstasy, and Drip had smoked weed in middle school and delved into drugs a little bit, but he started delving into hard drugs and did ecstasy every weekend, and was still to get money for ecstasy and Xanax. And from this it only got worse and worse, with Drip slowly spiralling further into drug use and addiction. And in 9th grade, going into 10th grade summer, Drip smoked Oxycontin. And at just the age of 15, Drip got into heroin. And all of this drug use unsurprisingly had a really bad impact on him, with Drip experiencing withdrawals, but he still couldn't get off the drugs. Couldn't sleep one night and I, started, I realized I was withdrawing from it because I was smoking every day and I called my older homie. And he was like, oh, what's going on, dude? I can't fucking sleep. My feet are all restless. He was like, oh, you're probably kicking. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I didn't know what that meant or like how that was going to feel. So I just like kind of realized then I was like, fuck, dude. But I couldn't stop, you know what I mean? Because it's just like at that time still, it was like more fun. You know what I mean? It was still fun to like do that shit. I don't know, but it's like I still like describe it as like one of the best feelings in the world. You know what I mean? And it's just like my life wasn't like super hard or like crazy, but it just like feels better to be on that shit than like to not be, I guess, as a kid. With time, it was a given that Drip's parents would figure out what was going on. And one day, Drip's mum walked in on him smoking in his bathroom. And because he wanted to keep doing drugs so bad, he manipulated the situation. Drip's mum worked in education and really wanted to see her son succeed. And Drip himself didn't want to fuck up and he wanted to succeed himself. And he'd find himself struggling at school because he'd either be high or withdrawing. And Drip wanted to pass a biology test to prove his mum that he was trying to succeed. And he failed and this really got to him and before the next semester he was homeschooled with the charter school that his mum worked at. But this meant Drip had more opportunity to use again. Drip really wanted to get off the drugs though, and got suboxone through a dirty doctor who ended up losing his licence and hanging himself. With Drip not even being of age for the drug, but being such a heavy user of heroin that he needed suboxone really bad. But the withdrawals from this were just as bad, if not as bad as heroin according to Drip. In senior year of high school, he went back to school and wanted to graduate. And I went back uh, senior year to my high school because I wanted to like try and graduate with my friends, you know what I mean? I didn't have no friends, like everyone kind of just like knew I was a piece of shit, you know what I mean? Because I was always stealing and 
just like you know what i mean so i was just that dude like i was like pretty popular all throughout high school before all that you know what i mean just like a skater you know got along with everyone you feel me so but it's just like <clears throat> just slowly but surely like turned into like that like black sheep you know but when he went back, Drip ended up getting expelled for having a meth pipe, meth, and Xanax. But this is incredibly sad. Drip knew what was happening and what the drugs were doing to him. He wanted to do good, he was just a kid at the time, and at every step he wanted and knew he should quit because it was bad for him, but at that age he didn't have the willpower. Drip did end up getting his diploma though, in Phoenix House, which was a rehab for adolescents around the time he was 17. And it was also while he was in there that he started getting into rapping because he met other kids who'd be rapping, and they'd be in the kitchen making beats on the sink with pans, and Drip would be freestyling along with these guys. Drip also met a guy in Phoenix house who kept him on a good path, and when he got out, he stayed sober for two years and would hang around sober people. But things started to get hard for Drip again. He'd start to make music consistently in San Diego with his friend Berger, who bought a mic and started making beats for Drip, with the first beat Drip hopping on being a Chief Keef type beat. Around this time, he would go by the name Drip Lord Splash God 2. Initially, Drip was making heavy mosh pit focused and trap influenced music, and only later pursued a more emotional avenue with his sound, with Drip around this time being influenced by artists like Soldier Boy and Chief Keef. However, soon after making music consistently, Drip started to smoke weed again, and only a week later he started to get loaded on heroin again. He also went to jail around this time too. After he got out though, he hit up his girlfriend because he had nowhere else to go. She was about to be done with him, but she knew he was in a bad place and was probably going to end up in a horrible situation if she didn't help, so she let Drip move in with her in LA. At this point though, Drip wasn't fully sober, because he was still drinking, but then he found drugs in LA and started to spiral again. Drip was in the lofts in LA and was trying to stay sober, and was a week sober by this point, but he found four bars in his sock and couldn't hold back, and he ended up shooting up dope in the Skid Row tents and ended up overdosing. Drip has spoken on this in an interview with The Fader, and said it just goes to show that if his mind was set on getting high, it was just going to happen. But now Drip had entered the music scene in LA, it was inevitable that he'd encounter drugs, and this made it harder to be sober. I mean, yeah, anyway. but that sounds so, like, weak of me to say that, right. but it is, it really is. It's like, it's just like, you're just, like, in this environment, you know what I mean? And it's kind of hard just to, like, I don't know... Like, I'm the type of person, dude, that, like, I take things to an extreme, and until, like, my life is completely fucked, and I'm, like, dug myself so fucking far down that I, like, can barely fucking get out, that's when I'm, like, oh, maybe I should, like, make a change, you know what I mean? Hmm. And that's just not, like, normal, but, like, for someone like me, it is, so, like, I, uh, that's what happened. It was also in LA where Drip met people like the legendary producers Charlie Shuffler and Ned Arb, as well as meeting artists like Peep and Tracy, Cold Heart, Brennan Savage, and Horsehead during this time. Meeting all of these legendary figures in the scene meant a lot to Drip, as it made him feel like he was a part of something and he would end up collaborating with a lot of these artists, with his most popular collaboration amongst all of these friends being his song with Peep, called Another Cup, which the two performed together a while back in LA. In terms of how Drip got the name Dripping So Pretty, a long time ago he went by Drip Lord Splash God on Instagram and made a couple songs and ended up basing his name off of that original Instagram name, but he said he wished it wasn't his name because of how the word Drip means swag now because it makes him kind of cringe. Drip felt as though he first got a sign of big success when he dropped Last Shot of Heroin, which was produced by the legendary producer Ned Arp, where he talked about his story and addiction, with Drip feeling as though the song was too gnarly to even put out, but he knew there'd be a positive reaction amongst fans, and that it would help those who suffer from addiction too, and hopefully share that struggle and show that there are other people who understand you. Although Drip has been sober for a few years now, he doesn't hide the fact that his past usage still does haunt him, and he shares that it isn't easy, especially in an industry where extensive drug use is somewhat glorified, but he's found solace in a network of supportive people, and now has people and tools he can rely on when he finds himself in a slum. Being able to pick up the phone and talk to people when he's going through things, which is definitely one of the best things you can do if you're ever going through something, because you can't bottle these things up, trust me, if you've got people around with you talk, even just getting small things out and speaking on it can be a massive weight off of your shoulders. But generally, I can't express how much I respect Drip for laying all of this on the table and being authentic with his story. It's hard enough to talk about stuff like this to the people who are closest to you in life, but Drip just lays it all out on the table, and he's definitely helped so many people get on a path to sobriety by doing this. So I just want to say if you're watching this Drip, you should be really proud of what you've accomplished and done for so many people. It goes without saying as well that Drip has developed his art heavily since he first came into the scene, and his sound has evolved a lot, with Drip delving into new avenues of his sound. On his most recent album Betrayed and singles like It's Over, No More and Grieving shown his artistic ability and diversity as an artist. Speaking on his original sound, he has said that at first he didn't really give a fuck about it and started caring about music a lot more after he started writing about his true emotions and experiences and sharing his struggles like his addiction to heroin and he has said that this is when he started to take music a lot more seriously. Because 
because he realised the importance his art has in helping others, with kids messaging him, telling him how much he's helped them and how much they can relate to his story. One of my favourite songs by Drip is Fingertips, where he speaks from his late father's perspective and what he may have been thinking in the last days before he passed away. This song just goes to show the level of expression and emotional investment Drip puts into his music, and it's no surprise so many have such high respect for him, because he doesn't shy away from exploring vulnerable sides of himself. Throughout his career, Drip has worked with the producer This Land Is, who makes some of the best guitar beats in my opinion, and his production meshes so well with Drip's vocals, so huge shout out to him as well. As of more recently, Drip has become a member of Lil Tracy's collective Vamp Boy Click, which as of now consists of Lil Tracy, Drip, Hi C, Casper and Cliff, and I'm a huge fan of everyone in the collective, so it'd be cool to see everyone work together on what they create. Drip and Tracy recently came out with a project together too, which if you haven't heard you should definitely check out. If you've never listened to Drip before, I recommend you his albums Back From Hell, Rest In Peace and Betrayed. Literally every song on these three projects are insane, but generally you could just shuffle all of his music. I can't name a song I don't like by Drip, so just check out everything, I'm sure you'll find something you like. As well as just a little outro, I'd just like to say sorry for not being as consistent as I was before with videos. I've been a lot busier with university work and just had a lot of personal things going on affecting my mental. But I'm going to try my best to put out videos again. Thank you for the crazy support while I've been gone too. I gained a mad amount of subscribers and I've got comments from a ton of people who I have a lot of respect for. Like some artists, Brandon Buckingham. It's crazy, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But I've not even been posting, so thank you so much and I appreciate you all a lot. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day.